I have a guy who wanted me to look at this piece of land here about removing the kudzu with goats, sheep, or some other animal rather than spraying. And we have uh, the Japanese knotgrass as well. And you can see on the other side they spray and how nasty that is. And there's actually a creek here, so there's rules about spraying. I'm Justin Hitt with Prosperity Homestead. And I'm doing a little consult consultation here. See, there's a creek. You don't want to be spraying herbicides near a creek. It kills the invertebrate and all the small life in the creek itself. Now, this area would be uh, ideal for goats, but difficult because the goats would, uh, would walk on this hill. And we don't want them falling in the water and escaping. Uh, but the kudzu isn't too bad here. That could be manic manic mechanically removed with a string trimmer. Uh, again, you don't want to cut... Uh, there's a misconception that once you clear stuff, see how it's mowed nice up to the edge, but they don't mow over the edge? You need this brush here to keep the water from eroding. Kudzu actually is a great erosion control, and kudzu is actually in the pea family. And you can see other nitrogen-fixing trees here trying to take hold so that they can prevent this hill from eroding. So here, we may need to exclude animals from it, and maybe perhaps plant some trees to prevent eroding. But let's look over here on the other side. There's these little clumps here. And this is a general assessment of what you're going to look for. You want to make sure that there's water on the property. You want to make sure there's electricity on the property because otherwise you have to haul that in. You want to make sure the animals can safely get to a space. So whether you're clearing out land on your own property, whether you're clearing out poison ivy, kudzu, Japanese knotgrass, any type of invasive uh, plant, you want to make sure that you can safely get the animals in. So I can see how I could cut a trail back there, or put up some temporary fence, and keep the animals in sections. This is going to be a two-acre plot. You also want to be aware that when you're doing habitat management, that we, once you rotate the goats through and they eat down all this material, we're not doing pasture rotation. We're doing a succession of intensive grazing so that we can kill all the kudzu in the tree and get it all pulled down. And then kudzu actually has a, uh, a tuber, kind of a big thick root system that would also need to be dug out. So you might come in behind with pigs, for example. Now again, this is a building right next to a road. And in Virginia, there's rules about animals in the road. So if an animal got out over there, I would be liable for it. So we'd have to have somebody stay on site during the whole duration of the removal. Now he said he's had a couple times before people come out here and remove this and it just simply grows back. And even when he mows, you can see how the kudzu is starting to get back out into the way. So if you don't want to spray and you want to do things like clear all the, the uh, cause he can't just burn this pile here to clear all the overgrowth so that he can remove that pile same thing with the other one to push back the kudzu which is doing its job by the way the kudzu itself is doing the job of erosion control that tells me that this ground is compacted and damaged and so what we'd end up doing is we'd lime it out so you can see how the grass is a little bit spotty we'd lime it out after the animals have been on it and we'd reseed it and try to get a good quality grass growing fast enough to outpower the kudzu now you're saying well kudzu's crazy Look at that, it's all up the trees and everything. It's killing these trees, by the way. Kudzu is gonna pull down these trees, kill all the trees, and start over. It's like a great reset. And you can see deer do get out and graze on it, but the deer don't graze it back fast enough. So what we gotta do is section this off, get goats or sheep, and goats are probably gonna be better for this property because sheep are gonna, they aren't gonna climb up trees and pull stuff down. But we need to make sure that they eat it down to the ground and then move it, move them to the next section to eat it down to the ground. And then it's gonna take three successive grazing in order to keep the kudzu from coming back. And then we'll have to do the same thing next year before the kudzu is gonna be out completely. And we, what I mean by out completely is after the goats eat it down to the ground and they don't have anything else to eat, they'll start pulling on the uh, kudzu roots and pull those up. Now it'd be better if we brought a couple pigs in behind and had the pigs till it up because they'll eat that kudzu Pigs will eat kudzu, but pigs can't pull kudzu out of the trees. Now, let's set zoning aside. I got a meeting with the zoning guy, and I got to ask him about all the details here. This is actually a huge opportunity for the county of Henry County to
to have great publicity because we'll remove two acres of kudzu without chemicals in an environmentally friendly way and help a business owner get more out of his building because again this isn't the all the property the property goes back uh, all the way back there beyond those trees and then it goes down the edge and then there's the potential to help every business along the way who's dealing with kudzu climbing up trees and kudzu uh, pretty much everywhere now kudzu is edible to humans as well but there isn't a human around here that's going to be able to eat this stuff fast enough so what we're looking for again is we're mimicking the behavior of nature you can already see that nature is already eating the kudzu just not enough now how many goats will it take to clear this kudzu well 200 goats can clear one acre in one day obviously we're not gonna have 200 goats out here and because you know after they clear off the one acre in one day they're gonna want food and they have to move someplace else so they're gonna bust down the fences so what I estimated is about 28 goats will take seven days to clear the kudzu on one acre and so if we do a quarter acre paddocks those goats are gonna be hungry enough to eat down the kudzu and pull it out of trees and and really damage the kudzu that's what we want to do we want to damage the kudzu before we move them to the next paddock and then that'll give us a one week before those 28 goats are back to the original pad which will have recovered a little bit now this is the, the thing about a natural habitat management and we, by the way we'll we will have to come out here and clean up all this trash uh, that's going to be a cost that, that the owner will take care of but we have to clean up all this trash so goats don't accidentally eat the trash but the goats will come back around and it, the kudzu will get about a week to relax. It'll start coming back and those little sprouts on the lower sections is what's gonna cause the goats to wanna be pulling that root out of the ground. Now goats are not typically going to pull the roots out of the ground unless they're really hungry and hungry goats are gonna push the fences. So we need to have really good electric fences. And again, you can see that's all the goats would leave behind. That is actually deer scat. So deer stand here on the edge. Now remember what we said about deer behavior. Deer are gonna stand on the edge and they're gonna lean into this and eat off the edges here. See, the, the deer don't have to go into this mess because they're not uh, detained in a fencing area. They're grazing and just moving along. And deer, again, don't wanna put their head down where they can't see out of the peripherals, okay? The deer don't want the danger of being predated on. But goats, on the other hand, because there's a nice little grass here, we put the we get a hose and some power from the building. We set up a little watering system right here and a little shade. We can have probably six feet out where the electric fence is. And then we cut some trails into this mess. And we basically uh, detain the goats in a quarter acre plot now we don't need 28 goats out here necessarily we could get 10 goats out again we have to go in there and make sure there's no glass and stuff but the goats would start pulling down that kudzu look at that kudzu now the problem with kudzu is that you can tunnel up under it there could be trash in there there could be trees that are harmful to the goats so it's not as easy as just putting a bunch of goats in there but the concept is we're leveraging the goat's innate behavior to push into growth and they're okay with getting in here because they're they're trying to graze up they don't want to graze the ground necessarily so they're going to get in here and trample some of this they're going to get in here and pu start pulling it out of the trees they're going to get in here and start making paths and trails and as they trample it as they dig through it they'll start eating it down and then we come back later after they've moved on to fresh ground because again, we don't want the goats to be hungry. The goats are hungry and, and, and they'll eat more, but they are going to actually try to challenge the fences. So we move them into a new section, keep them busy eating, and then eventually they rotate around to the original space where the kudzu starts to recover a little bit. We leave them on a little bit more than we would leave them on grass, and the cycle would continue to cut this down. Now, I don't know if this is doable. I'm going to turn the camera off and walk behind the kudzu. The kudzu is only on the outside, by the way. On the inside, it's just empty. And so animals would hide in there. They got to have shelter. You can see that there's pollinating bees. The kudzu is not necessarily bad, but it's, it's bad in wrong places. So to environmentally, ecologically, and 
and get the most from this land without poisoning it, the goats or other grazing animals would be ideal for this. The goats are small enough and we're far enough from the road that we could keep them uh, keep them away from the road. And of course, you come out here with a, with a string trimmer with a brush blade on it to make the paths for the fences. And then I'm gonna walk around on the other side. We probably end up with long stripped fences here working from the perimeter inward uh, and rotate those goats through. It's unfortunately might take a month because uh, if it takes a week to get a quarter acre done and we've got two acres total or an acre and a half, then by the time they get around for the second or third cycle, somebody might be out here for a couple months. The thing about goats is that they are, they process just like a, uh, a, a deer. So you don't want somebody to come out here and grab a goat and take off with it. So we'll have to build that into the pricing. And then we'll also have to look at uh, the trash removal. So all this trash in the, in the grass area needs to be cleaned up. We'll probably put a, an option to mow the grass for them since there'll be somebody out here. Uh, those brush piles might need to detain the goats on the brush piles to get those cleared up and then have that hauled off. Um, there's probably some maintenance items once we get in the, under the trees to drag out, and I don't know how much I want to go in there, but to drag out junk because kudzu will hide junk. And uh, that's kind of how you look at it. So I'm Justin Hit with Prosperity Homestead. I'm going to look around a little bit more without the camera. And I am just want to share with you kind of how you assess a piece of land. So if you have an overgrown piece of land, before you fight with the spray and pray, because this kudzu is not going to die with the spray, uh, and, you, and you're considering goats for clearing land, or you're considering to hire somebody to clear land, um, that's kind of how it works. They're going to have to be on it two or three times in cycle. To, to allow the kudzu to grow back a little bit and then cut it out again. There's gonna be people manually removing kudzu. Uh, and then of course, if you can have some pigs in here, you probably need three or four pigs. They can start uh, digging up the kudzu roots because those roots are all under here as well. And then, I don't wanna forget, you have to finish it with seeding. So you have to seed it with grass or something that's gonna replace the kudzu. The kudzu itself, from a permaculture perspective, is re rehabilitating the ground it once it takes down all the trees because the kudzu needs surface area once it takes down all the trees and collapses on itself the grass will grow over the kudzu once the kudzu is shaded out it will all die and go away by itself it doesn't really die it'll still have the roots in the ground but what we want to do is kill it with the animal pressure dig it up with the animal pressure replace it with high quality grass or pasture blend so that we get we get that nitrogen fixing, because uh, kudzu is nitrogen fixing, by the way. We get that nitrogen fixing to start rebuilding that soil, and then we can start mowing it. We don't need the goats anymore. We can start mowing it. And now, only need to come back with the goats where there's spot issues. Uh, for this particular lot, he may be cutting down some of these dead trees. There's quite a few dead trees that the kudzu killed. He might be cutting those down. He might be doing something. It's a commercial property. Um, but we want to give the owner of the property as many options as possible without having to use harmful chemicals without having to poison the environment, being that there's a stream nearby, uh, and ultimately to increase the property value. And let's say he increases property value by $50,000 or $100,000, the investment in goats doing this will be a little of nothing. Now, of course, there's permitting and, and zoning questions and, and other things, So, but, but just understand this natural cycle works, and this natural cycle will remove all of this kudzu. Now, if this is a project that we end up doing or that you want to see us do, put it in the comments below. If we get enough support on this, we'll turn it into a web series and we'll show you how it works. I don't personally want to be hanging out next to the highway with, with 28 goats. Um, however, however, looking at what we've got here, it is going to be the most environmentally friendly. It's going to be the most efficient. And the University of Kentucky shows the models for the numbers that you need and the value of, of protecting the soil and improving the soil. And uh, Virginia Tech has talked about this as far as uh, remediation. It is a proven system to use ruminant, ruminant animals to get rid of kudzu. Let's see if we can make that happen. I'm Justin Hit with Prosperity Homestead. Visit www.prosperityhomestead.org. Go to the contact page and ask your questions. Join our free newsletter. I look forward to hearing from you.